Welcome to Basic Form Creation. In this video we will show you how to create web forms using enterprise services that connect with IBM Cognos TM1. Creating forms involves five basic steps. First, we create a prototype in InfoPath that will allow us to visualize and confirm the operation of a form. Next, we use Enterprise Services to publish TM1 views and subsets that will provide the data for the form controls. Once the views and subsets are published, we can incorporate them into our form as data sources and connect them to the controls we created earlier. Formatting is then applied to the form, and finally, it can be published as HTML web pages using form services. We will start off creating our prototype by first looking at the information in TM1 to help us design the layout of the form. We will start by uh, using this example, monthly compensation planning. We open up this view, and TM1 presents us with a list of uh, versions that the user can select, the departments, and the years, and for what they choose, a list of employees and their monthly compensation, starting with September, will be displayed. In this example, we are going to be creating a form that operates similar to this view. So we start first by opening up InfoPath, and we'll be presented with a selection of templates at which to begin the form creation process. For enterprise services, you will use typically one of two forms, a blank form or a blank form InfoPath filler. And the difference between the two is that blank form can not only publish to enterprise services, but can also be published to SharePoint. InfoPath filler forms add additional controls that are not supported by SharePoint web pages. However, they are supported by enterprise services. In this case, we're going to be using some of the basic controls and we can stay with the blank form. When you first open up a form in InfoPath, you'll be presented with a, an initial layout. And this initial layout is conducive more towards a portrait style form. In the case of the form or the view that we have in TM1, you'll notice we have a number of columns that need to be presented. So our layout is going to more closely resemble a landscape mode. And we can configure this by going into Page Design, Page Setup, and we can change some of the margins and the modes for the print version of this. So let's do 0.5 on each of the top, bottom, left and right. Go to print settings and change it to landscape mode. Now that we have it in a landscape mode for the print version of it, we want to also do it for the display version. We do this by selecting the table and right clicking on it and choosing table properties. We will then be given a set of properties for this table, which is the layout. And going to the column tab, we can change this to what seems to work very well for a landscape is 960 pixels. So we change that to 960, and that will adjust the width of our form here at, at the appropriate for printing out and displaying in a landscape mode. Now you notice notice there's two sections. One is the title, and we'll label this one Monthly Compensation Planning Sample. And the next section is where we place in all the controls within the form. We typically find that the best way to work with this section is to break it up into three additional sections. One for the selection, so this will correspond to the drop-downs that we have here that the user can pick from. 
The next section will be the body section, which will contain the data and the rest of the display of information. And the last one will be the footer, where we can put perhaps the name of the form or the revision or copyright information about the form. So now let's put in the controls for this section. But before we do, let's label these. As you'll notice in InfoPath, it will allow you to apply names to these. And it will assign a default name, Group 1, Group 2, and Group 3 for each of the sections we added. So let's give them different names. We can double click on it and change the name. And we'll call this one Sec Selection. The second group, by double clicking on it, will be the body. And the final one will be the footer. And choose OK. So there are our sections. Now, in this layout, we are going to use drop downs. With TM1, it does not present you with the label for what this drop down is. It just displays what the value is. In our form, now, we want actually to display the label. And we can do this by inserting a table. And we'll do it two columns by three rows. Okay? And in the leftmost column, we'll put in the label. And in the rightmost column, we'll put in the actual drop down. Now, right now, this is a little bit wide. So we're going to shrink this table down to make it smaller. Let's bring this one in as well. So our labels will then be version, department, and year. The user can select from any of those. And let's bring this down a little bit more. And we'll insert our drop downs in these right hand columns. So let's do our drop down list box one for version, one for department, and one for year. The next section we're going to fill in now is what we want the body of the form to contain. And for our purposes, since this is just going to be one table, we will use a repeating table. By selecting on this, it will ask us the number of columns that we want to add to this table. And if we go back to our view, we will notice that we have one column for each of the months, so that's 12, one column for the employees, that would be 13, and what we're going to do in our form is add an additional total column, so we want 14 columns total. And that will insert them all equally spaced. And we're going to size them a little bit differently, so we're going to size each of the months a little bit smaller than the rest. And InfoPath has a great feature that you can highlight all these columns, right-click and choose Table Properties, Go to Column and change all of the columns at once. So we're going to change them to a width of 60 pixels. And that just adjusted all my columns at one time. For the first two, we're going to adjust them a little bit differently. So I'm just going to click into the column and choose Table Properties. Go back to the column. And now for this one, for the employee name, I want 150 pixels wide and click on the next column to go to the next one, which in this case is the total, and I want to make that one 70 pixels. And the rest are all 60 columns wide, as you can see I'm going through it. Choose OK. And now I can put in my headers. So employee name, followed by the total. And then our calendar year starts in September. So September October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and then finally August. Now the beauty of using InfoPath, even if you don't create your forms here, perhaps you are using 
Visual Studio and ASP.NET or using Eclipse or some other form creation application, you can still use InfoPath to help you prototype. And even though I have no data connected to this, I can go ahead and preview this form and take a look at how this will operate. The users will be able to pick the version, the department, the year, and then the table will contain multiple rows, each with the employee name, the total, and then the monthly compensation. Our prototype is now done, and the next step would be then to create or publish the subsets and views that were built into TM1 into Enterprise Services and then bring them into this form. This concludes creating a prototype with Enterprise Services using InfoPath. In the next video we will cover how to publish TM1 subsets and views for use in our web forms.